What's up everyone, welcome to another video. In this video, I will review this portable sauna. I will tell you right now that I received this product for free to test and review. However, this is not a commercial or a paid advertisement. I have 100% free reign. And like all my other videos, this is an honest review. If this product has problems, I will absolutely point them out. I receive email offers to test free products daily, which I don't accept for various reasons, but this one looked interesting. Now let's open up the box and get started. We have the floor mat, the insulated cover, the steamer, instructions, footrest, pole connectors, chair with carrying bag, carrying bag for the whole portable sauna, and the frame poles. Here's the whole kit. Instructions, pole connectors, poles, insulated cover, chair with bag, footrest, floor mat, steamer, and carrying bag. Step one is to assemble the frame with poles and pole connectors. I will start a stopwatch to see how long it takes to assemble. Assembly is pretty straightforward. The poles have letters on them that correspond to the diagram and the instructions. And the structure is pretty simple. Finishing up, it took me four minutes and 23 seconds on my first attempt. And here's the frame. Let's take a close look at it. There are a lot of extra connectors in the kit that I received. I assume they are spares for the future. Looking at the structure, all four width poles are the same. This one, this one, this one, and this one. Getting into the side post, the horizontal post, and the vertical post, they are not single posts. They are a long one and a short one spliced together. This long post and this long post are the same. And this short post and this short post are different. If these were single posts, it would be fewer pieces, less connectors, easier to assemble, and more structurally secure, or at least make all the long posts the same. But I work as a mechanical engineer and design complex machines for a living. I'm looking for common parts and being picky, and it does the job. Taking a close look, the assembly is simple and straightforward. The pipes are chrome-plated aluminum tubes with plastic plugs at the ends. They are lightweight and will not rust. To connect them, just push the end into the plastic connector. Just connect them as shown in the instructions, and bam, you have a frame. And here's a look at the size so far. For scale, I'm six foot one inch tall and weigh 200 pounds. I'm inside, and I'm very interested to see the finished product. The next step is to unfold the insulated cover and place it under the frame. Make sure the pockets in the cover face the front, which is the curved end of the frame. And here's a close look at it. The frame is a tight, snug fit inside the cover. The frame securely locates nicely in the cover. The cover has a nice insulated outside and a waterproof inside. The next step is to lay in the floor mat. The floor mat is undersized, so I centered it and left a uniform gap around the perimeter. Next it's time to get into the steamer. We need the steam box and one hose. Back at the portable sauna, connect one end of the hose to the steam box and place the steam box on the floor. Then, connect the other end of the hose to this pass-through connector in the sauna wall. Taking a look at the steam box, it can be disassembled for cleaning. The top lid screws off. Then there's a diffuser that can be lifted out. The steam enters through this bottom hole here, then goes through the diffuser and exits the steam box through these holes around the perimeter. Next, set the chair in the sauna over the steam box. Note that the chair looks like a typical folding camping chair. However, here's a typical camping chair the chair in this kit is much smaller, but it works for me. Sticking a tape measure on it, it is 17 inches wide. And next up is the footrest. It's made of wood and has nice textured rollers to roll your feet on. With everything set up inside, now let's pull the cover up over the frame. It's a nice tight fit and pulls all of the posts and joints together. Check all of the corners and make sure everything is seated properly. If the cover is twisted, realign it. I think this is important to make sure everything is aligned as intended, so the zipper will zip up smoothly. With everything aligned, both sides of the zipper should line up and come together all the way up the back. I'm stressing to make sure everything lines up correctly before zipping it up, because the zipper is plastic. I don't think it would be a good idea to force things if it's not aligned. So the sauna is pretty much assembled. I tested the front zipper to make sure everything is aligned, and it zips smoothly with no problems. Before I connected the steamer, I did a test fit to see how it feels. First, you have to step over the front bar to get in. 
In my opinion, you need some strength and agility, because you should not lean your whole body weight on the lightweight frame to support yourself. Zipping it up went well. All of the zippers have a pull tab on the inside and outside. Getting the zipper over this front bar was the only challenge. Once zipped inside, I could easily open the armholes. With the small pocket, I could reach my hand into the whole pocket. With the big pocket, I can only get my hand into the top of the pocket. Reaching in the pockets is a bit challenging because it's awkward to bend my wrist over this front bar to reach into them. And the handholds are easy to close. I also noticed that there was quite a bit of clearance around my neck. And here's a quick close-up of the neck area. There's an insulated collar that velcros at the front and the back to seal around your neck. But surprisingly, there was plenty of room inside. I'm looking forward to this. And again, I had to step over that front bar to get out. And quickly, here's a half section view showing these from the inside. Stepping over the bar to get in, and sitting down. Note that the cover will be out where the frame is. It's currently sagging in because half of it is zipped down. There's actually quite a bit of room in here. And here's a close up of the awkward wrist angle to get my hand over the front bar and down into the pocket. And last, stepping over the front bar to get out. I just want to show a few more things. Then I'll connect the steamer and try out the sauna. The frame is lightweight, weighing in at 3.1 pounds. The frame with the cover is also lightweight, weighing in at 6.4 pounds. And the overall dimensions are about 31 and a half inches wide by 35 inches deep by 39 and a quarter inches tall. Last, I tried it without the crossbar in the front since it can be challenging to step over it. Without the crossbar, I could walk in and zip it up, no problem. Reaching through the handholes, it's easier to fit my hands in the pockets, and it's easy to unzip and walk out. Here's a view inside without the crossbar. The insulated cover is touching my knees. And here's a view with the crossbar installed. I have plenty of clearance between the cover and my knees, so the bar does serve a purpose. If the front crossbar is difficult to step over, I recommend bringing it in with you and installing it, and uninstalling it and taking it out with you when you leave. And here's a clear view of getting in and installing the front bar, then uninstalling the front bar and getting out. So that concludes the pre-examination. Let's connect the steamer and try out the sauna. The locking lid rotates counterclockwise to unlock and remove. There are three locking tabs around the perimeter of the lid, and there are three mating locations around the perimeter of the steamer. This tab is wider than the other two, which goes in this wider slot. There's also a safety pressure release valve in the lid. If a hose is kinked or blocked, excessive pressure will vent out. We also have a remote and instructions. Next, let's connect the hose. Make sure it is free and not bent or kinked. And let's prepare the remote. It requires two AAA batteries, which were not included. There are volume marks inside the steamer. Per the instructions, we will fill it to 1.5 liters, which should last about one hour. So let's fill it up and reinstall the locking lid. But first, you can add some herbs or flowers wrapped in a gauze bag in the steamer or the steam box if interested. Then plug it in and press the power button to turn it on. There's the time button, which increases the time in 10 minute intervals. We will set it to 60 minutes. And there's a level button, which adjusts the temperature. There's levels one through nine. The instructions say to let it preheat at level nine for seven to 10 minutes. But first, let's make sure this remote works before we get in. The power button works, power off, and power on. The temperature level button works. Let's get it back up to level 9 to preheat. And the time button works. Let's set it back to 60 minutes. And the preheat is going smooth. The steamer is steaming. And the sauna is steamy and getting warm inside. 10 minute preheat is complete. Per the instructions, adjust the temperature back to level 5 first. Since level five is suitable for most people, you can turn it up if you think it's not hot enough. Now let's get in the sauna. I brought a phone for the small pocket, the remote for the small pocket, a tall book for the big pocket, a towel for a special experiment, and a thermometer. The current room temperature is 66 degrees Fahrenheit. I unzipped the preheated sauna and climbed in, zipped it up, and velcroed the collar around my neck. Testing the armholes and the pockets, I could reach the phone and use it with no problem. I could even comfortably make phone calls. I could also reach the remote no problem. But I will point out that from this angle, I could not see the display on the steamer. I can't see the time or temperature level on the display, so the remote is largely useless. And I could reach the tall book and read it with no problem. The armholes are pretty nice. They are easy to open and close, and the pockets offer some good options. Now for the special towel experiment. 
Since there's clearance around the neck and collar, I tried wrapping a towel around my neck to close the gap. It is soft and comfortable, and it works, so it's an option. Now let's get to the main event. Let's check out the heat in the sauna. It is hot and steamy in here. The footrest is actually pretty cool, and I like it. There's the steam box, pumping out the steam. And the thermometer is currently at 97 degrees Fahrenheit. But I definitely lost some heat unzipping it and bringing the camera in. I felt it cool right down when I did that. I'm sure it was well over 100 degrees Fahrenheit. It was comfortable in there, but I'll tell you right now that I'm not a sauna person. I don't like feeling super cold or super hot. I like feeling regular. So I'm not going to crank up the heat with me inside. That was enough for me. But I'll let it run at level 9 with the thermometer inside and see what it can do. Coming back 10 minutes later, this thermometer is maxed out at 120 degrees Fahrenheit. For me personally, sticking my arm in, it was uncomfortably hot. I personally would not want to sit in here. Using an infrared laser thermometer, the inside wall of the cover is 130 degrees Fahrenheit. And just for fun, the outside of the cover is about 90 degrees Fahrenheit. So that's what it can do at maximum temperature. Last, let's look at drying it out and using the storage bag. I began by opening up the cover because of course, it's all wet in here. I gave it a head start by drying the easy stuff with a towel. But there's still water in places. I just left it open overnight to see if it would dry up on its own. And here we are the next day. It's almost completely dried up. This is great. I did find a little bit in this corner, but I handled it with a towel. Last is the carrying bag. The portable sauna was easy to disassemble and fit into the carrying bag. I arranged everything the same as it originally was in the box. I just folded the cover up and stuffed it in, and it fit. All good. This was a long video, so I will keep my final thoughts short. It is a lightweight, low-cost, portable sauna. It's an efficient design for the size and purpose, and it works as advertised. If this is something you're interested in, I would recommend it. If you're looking for something more permanent or larger in size, then that's a different level of sauna. I hope you found this helpful or entertaining. Have a great day, and I'll see you in the next video.